Our scripture reading this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah. I'm reading from the 35th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Listen for God's holy word. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, and the majesty of Carmel and Sharon, and they shall see the glory of the Lord in the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense, and he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be open, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless will sing for joy. For the water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert, and the burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water, and the haunt of jackals shall become a swamp, and the grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, and they shall attain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, before we start off, I wanted to let you know that we're not crazy, that we do know that you usually light the second candle. We usually light the candle of joy on the third week. Do you remember why we have changed it to the second week? We've done this now for 10 years because of Sandy Hook. If you remember, Bruce was deployed right after Sandy Hook took place. And so Sandy Hook, uh, the 10th anniversary will be on the 14th. And so the Sunday um, always closest to that is the Sunday of joy. And we have just switched joy and peace, the joy and peace candle. So thank you for allowing us to do that. I'm sure probably next year you'll go back to where it is normal. But thank you for putting up with the Wismer quirks. So today I wanna talk about joy. And so um, the nice thing is I got to to talk to um, some of the congregation yesterday as we worshiped yesterday at five o'clock over in the uh, contemporary service over in the uh, community center. And so I started off and I thought about, you know, what it is. And so um, I've been thinking, obviously, when for those of you who have retired, you know what it is like to kind of think over where have you been and what you've done and what your life's like. And so I thought to myself, as coming up to preach, is that one of the things that Bruce and I do when we come to preach is, you know, what, what word does God need for you to hear today? What word does God need Molly to hear today? You just, you scream as loud as you want, girlfriend, because I can handle it. So I want to think about hope, and I want to think about joy, because that's what our text is going to be with, with Isaiah. It's talking, he's trying to bring what to the people? What do we know about the people of Israel at that time? Where are they? They're, 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 they're spread out because they've been, they have, their cities have been destroyed, there's destruction, things are not good. Um, they're in a place that, um, and they're probably figuratively and literally a place of despair, a place that is not comfortable and known to them. So I want to kind of put us in, not in that situation, but what is it in today's world that you can relate to them about where you need to hear a word of hope or you need to hear a word of joy. You know, one of the things about Sandy Hook that reminded me, we continue to have these senseless killings. The other thing, and it, it, I'm sorry, um, what, the other thing is there was a, a young man from Riverview who was, for whatever reason, life was not what he could handle anymore. And so he took his life. And so not only does his family and the community now have to deal with that. You know, we look at families, I know that some families have still not reunited after 
these six or seven years that we've been dealing with tension. We look at the people in Ukraine and see that they are, are facing something very horrible. And we realize what affects them then affects us. So what is it that we need to hear today? Where is our despair? Where do we need to hear God's joy? Where do we need to hear God's peace? Where do we need to hear God's hope? And it's in that situation that Isaiah comes to the people and he says, though you do not see much evidence of God's righteous reign, it is there. And he uses these beautiful poetic words, images that shatter the darkness of the with the glimmering rays of hope that better times are ahead, calling them to remember God's promises, God's covenant, God's goodness, reminding them that even in the dark times, even in times when you don't see or you cry out, oh, where are you, God? God is there. The interesting thing is that Isaiah is not offering the Jewish people false optimism or deceiving those who have ears to hear. He's not placating them. Isaiah has powerful words to share with God's people. And he understands if he is going to get to them, if they're going to listen to him, if they are going to understand, then he needs to bring something for them that, 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 that brings forth their sense of hope and vision and imagination. Isaiah knows what God has promised, and he knows it's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when. And if that's the problem that's going on here, it's the when. The when requires belief. Oh, Lord, when will those killings stop? Oh, Lord, when will the bullying go away? Oh, Lord, when will everybody have food and shelter? Oh, Lord, when will there be no more war? Oh, Lord... When will we look into another's face and not see any kind of ism, racism, sexism, nationalism? Not a matter of if, but when. So Isaiah comes to the people and he offers them a little joy. Last week, we talked about hope, and without hope, we said visions fail and go away. But with hope, there's ability to see a world that God has promised. Hope motivates us to dream dreams and imagine what might be. Hope is when we look at a newborn baby and realize that her whole life is in front of her. Hope is looking at our kids. I am so proud of you, Paul Stephen. Looking at our kids who stand up and remind us what is right and what is not right. Who are willing to go out on the line that we are not willing to take. Isaiah knows that if he's to capture their attention, he is going to have to successfully infuse them with hope. Hope that there can be a better tomorrow. Hope that they can go back to their lands. Hope that God is with them at all times. And so here we have one of the most beautiful poetic descriptions in the Bible. Isaiah paints a picture describing the abundance of God's love and redeeming action and allows for the possibility for them to dare to believe that they can dream dreams and see visions of a future filled with hope, a future of joy and peace and harmony. The desert lands, a place that is dry and bare, and you've all been to the desert, you know what the desert's like. It's dusty and dirty, and it gets in your nostrils and your hair and your mouth. And so the people know about the desert. They've been desert living. And then he says, but the desert, in the desert will come these refreshing, refreshing blue waters gushing forth. And there will be blooms of flowers all around, transformed with color. And there will be rejoicing and singing. Isaiah tells of a land radiant with lush and vibrant color and a promise of new life in the midst of complete and total destruction. The weary, the fearful, the feeble can take heart because God has not turned God back on us. 
in the midst of all that we are going through, in the midst of the good and the bad, God is there. There to save and redeem and restore. But there's more in this text. Not only that, our text describes in specific ways what joy might look like. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped and the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless will sing for joy. Isaiah's vision promises restoration to a captive people for those who have patiently waited and watched for God's restoring and healing care. Is it not what we think about when we point to Christmas? The long-awaited Messiah who will bring salvation, restoration, and kingdom living. There, our hope, our joy is in a God who comes to us often in unexpected time and unexpected places, reminding us that we are not forgotten. Reminding us that we are not all alone. Reminding us that even in the midst of our greatest sorrow and turmoil, that God is there to wipe away our tears and to put a song in our hearts. Our God creates beauty out of chaos and life out of death and makes the desert to burn, burst forth into a magnificent bloom of color. There is the joy. Or there is the joy. Or there is the joy. Isaiah reminds the people, do not give up. But each day, wake up and embrace God's goodness and grace. It's a message meant to be filled with joy, a message of hope. Expect those desert places to be filled with the presence and power of God. Expect the lost spaces to be surrounded by God's love. Expect God to be present for you today. Expect to be a part of kingdom living. Expect the miracles and the unexpected that you can't explain. Expect the mystery. So in closing, I'm going to use a story that probably I used before because it's a well-known story that people have used before to illustrate a point. There was a little boy who had a grandfather who loved him very much. And the grandfather had this prized pocket watch. And so he gave it to the little boy. And the little boy was proud and loved this watch, and he took the watch wherever he went because it reminded him how much his grandfather loved him. And his grandfather was willing to share that gift with him. Well, one day the little boy was out playing, and he wasn't paying too much attention. And all of a sudden, he went to touch in his pocket to feel the watch, and it wasn't there. So you can imagine what happened to this little boy. He begins to panic, and he starts to look all around, and he searches high and low, and he's getting anxious, and tears are beginning to well up in his eyes, and all of a sudden he stops, and he thinks to himself, just be quiet, just be quiet, and listen. And then he hears, In the silence, when he's quiet, he hears the sound of the watch, the watch that he thought was lost. This parable reminds us as we go deeper into Advent, stop scurrying around in the desert places. Take time to listen for God to come and to renew you. Take in the beauty of the season and the sounds the gifts that are bound around us. Abound in hope and joy, even when all around you seems to question your faith and makes you want to doubt. Abound in hope and joy amidst the walls of anger and fear and frustration and uncertainty. And be infused with God's love this day. Abound in hope and joy and do not give up and do not give in, my friends. 
Meet this coming week with fresh awareness. Let your joy abound. Let it reign in your life. For there is nothing in all of creation that can separate us from the love of God. Through our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, fill us this day with joy. The joy of a people who know you, who love you, and who serve you. Amen.